the traditional realizing the American dream, a bunch of Europeans coming here in the 18th century to find the American dream. This guy came 200 years later uh, from a different part of the world. He takes the 20th century version of most of our roots. We always remember that time when Akeem pulled up in the cab and he says, uh, uh, hello, man. Uh, I'm looking for Coach Guy Lewis. And he said, well, he's at the school. And, and all of us are laughing. It's like, well, who is that? Abdul from Lagos, Nigeria. This may be the nation's finest athlete in terms of basketball. I pulled up for a shot from the top of the key and took a shot. And he was standing about at the dotted line and jumped up and caught it. And he goes, oh, here's your shot. There's a Horatio Alger, there certainly has to be a Hakeem Olajuwon because his story is even uh, one that's better to tell. Never in the history of doing games for the Houston Rockets ever seen a greater performance than Hakeem Olajuwon. You'd have to think about this. If you want to shoot a movie of a guy like Hakeem coming over here and, and seeing his progress, nobody would believe it. They'd say, that. no way that could happen. But it did happen. Hakeem's long journey began in Lagos, Nigeria, where to make his story even more incredible, he grew up playing every sport except basketball. I jump, team handball, field hockey. And I was more of an all-around athlete where I just like to play. But standing six feet seven inches tall at the age of 16, Hakeem finally discovered the sport he seemed destined for. Basketball has something that's so unique that immediately I pick up the game and you know realize that this is the sport for me. All the other sport just becomes a secondary. Learning the game at an incredible pace, he led his high school to a national championship. And at the age of 18, now standing almost six feet, 10 inches tall, Hakeem would be urged by his coach to continue his development in America. My first response is, I didn't know anybody in the United States. Then he told me he has some friends which are coaches in the United States. And we talked to Coach Lewis. This guy says, Coach. And I said, yeah. And he said, this is Akeem. And he said, I want to come down to Houston. And of course, he told me he was about six, seven, or eight. And I immediately figured that'd be six, four, or five. And I said, well, come on down. I went in and see my two assistants. and. Uh, said, we got this guy coming in from Africa that wants somebody to meet him at the airport. I said, well, you only run out to the airport and pick him up. When is he coming in? He said, probably about 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I said, well, coach, I'll go out there. He says, no, no. He says, let him take a cab. It was about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Here comes a cab. And there's a king getting out of the car, getting out of the yellow cab, and getting out of the yellow cab, and getting out of the yellow cab. The kid was so big, Guy V says, Donnie, get out there and get that kid's bag and get him in this office. Hakeem had entered a strange new world, but he quickly set about making himself at home. The campus life was a wonderful uh, life for me. Getting to meet people, different students from different majors, different backgrounds, getting up in the morning, going to class. So I came, I'm on campus, you know, I'm a university student. Hakeem's adjustment on the court went equally well. Though his offensive skills were limited, he made his impact felt from the start. Improving with every game, Hakeem helped the Cougars go all the way to the Final Four. And though they would lose to the eventual champion, the North Carolina Tar Heels, Hakeem's basketball education was just beginning. Uh, I told him that. I said, you just need to work hard this summer uh, on your shooting and offensive ability. And there's no doubt you'll be a starter next year. And of course, boy, he, he just lit up at that. Working out during the offseason in a Houston recreation center, Hakeem found a perfect opponent to help him in the next stage of his development. That summer, uh, we were playing with the professionals. You know, that's where I was playing against Moses, Moses Malone. Moses was not you know, really playing around. He was very physical and really playing me very tough. Moses really took it to him. He pounded on him, he banged on him. Um, and I know there were days, Akeem has said, that he wanted to stop, he wanted to quit, but 
he also had a drive to, uh, to be the best, and Moses brought that out of him. After months of daily battles, Hakeem sent his mentor a final message that he had learned his lessons well. A shot was taken, and Hakeem came out of nowhere, and he went up and he grabbed it, and he went back up, and Moses, you know, went up with him, and we just gonna say, oh, Lord, he gonna throw the young boy down, and, and Hakeem just took Moses and just sort of like threw him down and, and dunked it, and we all looked and said, oh, here we go. <laughs> Hakeem was now ready to test his hard-earned skills, and the Cougars' schedule promptly gave him the ideal opportunity. We had this tournament every year. It's called the Blue Bonnet Classic. And Sonny Smith brought his Auburn Tigers in, and Mr. Charles Barkley was with him. And he said the first thing he's going to do, he's going to dunk on Hakeem. First four times he went up to dunk it, Hakeem had four block shots. And throughout his sophomore year, Hakeem would send notice to the college basketball world that he was now ready to dominate. He hustles down the floor as well as any big man that's ever played the game. And Elijah Wano, one man wrecking through. Harper, oh, oh, oh. At the free throw line, oh, that's a no-no. This game's too easy. They bring a lot of Nigerians over with it. His game progressed to the point where he was very good on both ends of the court. Uh, no longer was he a liability on the offensive end. And uh, once he developed that, there's nothing you could do. Elijah Wano. Behind Olajuwon, the Cougars reeled off 22 straight wins. Suddenly, Hakeem was at the center of basketball's best team and most celebrated fraternity. By Slemma Gemma at its best. It just took off. I mean, it nationwide, people started hearing about Fire Slamma Gemma. And the players took a lot of pride in that. Juan Roseboro has it swatted away by Hakeem. I've got six blocks now for Olajuwon. Franklin back to Michael Young. Houston would go on to win the Southwest Conference title and race through the early rounds of the NCAA tournament. And after defeating the celebrated Louisville Cardinals in the semifinals, they headed into the championship game as clear favorites to take home the national title. Today. I don't know if you realize that. Pretty good high percent. 13. That's it? I think that's great. Louisville <laughs> uh, can't join our fraternity. They can, huh? Since the semifinal was billed up as the best teams in college basketball, Louisville against Houston, after we won that game, we kind of thought, well, we're the best. And as the game began, it seemed as if Hakeem and his Cougars would easily sweep the North Carolina State Wolfpack aside. Hakeem is everywhere, isn't he? Elijah Watt, 20 points. Can't say much more. He's making jumpers, blocking shots, grabbing rebounds. But as time wound down, Houston made a fatal mistake. We made our run. We built up the lead. Then uh, we tried to secure that lead by spreading the court, which really worked against us. The Cougars had given the Wolf Pack a chance to get back into the game. Oh, Wittenberg to Wittenberg. He can tie it up. It's and with seconds remaining and the score tied, the national championship would be decided by one final play. They've got to drive to the basket. It's down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg holds a long way. Oh, they won it. On the dunk. The cardiac kids, North Carolina State has captured their second NCAA championship, 54 to 52. Of course, you know, just disappointed because, you know, we, we were the better team. And we know that we were supposed to win, but we did not win. Though Houston had fallen short, Hakeem's stock had never been higher. And speculation was rampant that he would follow his teammate, Clyde Drexler, into the NBA. It was really touch and go that he was going to go. They were going to have a dual signing and everything else, and he just felt like that he wanted to try one more time to win it. With most of the 83 Cougars team gone, Hakeem would now take Houston's fate into his own hands. In his junior year, he would be named an All-American. 
he would lead Houston to a school record 32 wins, and he would return to the NCAA Finals to battle for redemption against the Georgetown Hoyas and their great center, Patrick Ewing. The NCAA championship game is about to begin, and Houston and its fans are confident that this is finally their championship season, and the Cougars have the force on their side. As he had all season, Hakeem tried to single-handedly take over the game. But Georgetown's depth and talent would ultimately prove to be too much. Pass and Michael Graham took over from there. It just came down to, to who had what around them. And unfortunately, Ewing had a lot more around him than Hakeem did. And so for the second straight year, Akeem Abdul Olajuwon has tasted bitter defeat in this final game. His dreams of a championship had again been shattered, and once more he faced a difficult choice. This time, however, he would decide that his future was now. Oh yes, that's why I just want to end the speculation that's been going around. Maybe I'm gonna stay or I'm gonna go. So I want everybody to know I'm leaving this school this year. The Houston Rockets select Akeem Olajuwon of the University of Houston. Akeem Olajuwon, who started playing basketball just five years ago from Nigeria, is now the number one pick. Be a number one player pick in your draft, that's a big accomplishment. And there's a lot of pressure. They're picking you over somebody like Michael Jordan to say this would be a mistake of a lifetime. So you can't afford to say this is a mistake. Hakeem would quickly show the Rockets that he was far from a mistake. This is but Elijah Wan with the big offensive follow. He's a force. Chambers over Lloyd. Blocked by Elijah Wan. Again by Elijah Wan. It was an awesome experience just watching some of the things that he can do on the court. You know, he's a combination of quickness and finesse combined with uh, strength and power. Makes a move left. Ah! Oh, my. He would always get on you if he would foul before letting his man get to the basket so he could block a shot. He said, don't foul. I get the ball, man. I get the ball. <laughs> Teaming Hakeem with 7'4", Ralph Sampson, Houston now featured the celebrated Twin Towers, and together they terrorized the league. Elijah Wan, off to Ralph Sampson. He jams another one home. And the Rockets are rolling. It was fun. Because we, you know, we start dunking on people also. I start having the same feel that they didn't call it. How about a give and go between the twin towers? When you got two guys that can run, there's one of us all the way down on the end of the court. And then when both of us get down there, I mean, it's, it was a tough decision for the guards who to give it to, but it was a tough decision for the people that were defending us who they were going to guard. There was some games the players would say, oh man, why you got to embarrass me like that? Why you got to make me drive to the hole? Because it's like, yo, we wanted to see the two big guys play volleyball with your shot. Even though they lost, you played first. In Hakeem's first two years, the Rockets would go from last place to a division crown. Lucas, this There is a monster in Houston, Texas. And in the 1985-86 season, they would storm into the playoffs. The lights, the party's over. They would breeze through the postseason's first two rounds. And they would make it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, where they faced the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers. And though the inexperienced Rockets were underdogs, they were also undaunted. How do you feel with Houston Rockets matchup against the LA Lakers? Feel real good, because I'm sure we can beat them. But as the series began in L.A., Kareem Abdul-Jabbar used his vast playoff experience to teach Hakeem a painful playoff lesson. Kareem, pass good. Kareem, inside against Samson and Elijah He beat them both on that play. And the L.A. Lakers have taken a one nothing lead in their best of seven Western final, beating Hakeem and the Rockets. No doubt about it, they're the world champs and they were the better ball club today. If, uh, if we don't play better, this thing will be over in a hurry. Hakeem was determined that the Rockets would play better, and he personally ensured that they did. Elijah Wan blocks. Cooper back on defense against Level. Feeds Lloyd. Feeds Elijah Wan. Ball into Kareem, turn to the right, puts it up. Blocked by Elijah Wan. 
Ramsey closely guarded. Takes the ball into Kareem. A double team, they steal it. Lewis Lloyd, great defense. The ball cross corner over to Reed. He comes underneath. Blows it, slam dunk in the rebound by Elijah Wan. And the Lakers are being pummeled, humiliated at home. The Los Angeles Lakers are beaten thoroughly and soundly by the Rockets of Houston. They came to town looking for a split. The split gets in the home court advantage. Returning home, the Rockets played at fever pitch as they ferociously attacked the stunned Lakers. Oh, oh, don't ball Elijah Into Kareem. Blocked by Elijah Here's the fast break for the Rockets. Elijah Wan. Triple on Akeem. Akeem with the basket and the foul. You can see it in their eyes that they panic because you see that these guys are coming, you know, these guys can beat us. They realize that they can lose this series. When you saw that weakness, then we gain confidence. Grabbing games three and four in impressive style, the Rockets push the Lakers to the brink of elimination. And the defending world champions have nowhere to go. The Houston Rockets are gonna be one game away from getting to the NBA Finals. They're starting to believe in themselves. Uh, they're not taking anything for granted anymore. They are uh, a team that has uh, a possibility of winning a world's championship, and they feel that. All that was left was for Hakeem and the Rockets to complete the job. And they did, with one of playoff history's most dramatic finishes. One second on the clock. Samson. Ah! Off balance has given the Houston Rockets the Western Conference Championship. Unfortunately for the Rockets, their celebration would end one series too soon. Reverse layup by Larry Bird, who has every move in the book. Celtic basketball. Facing one of the greatest front lines of all time, Hakeem would play valiantly. And there's another turnaround and another Hakeem Elijah Wan foray. But the veteran Celtics would prove to be too much. The championship would be theirs, but the future seemed destined to belong to Hakeem and the Young Rockets. Next year, we're gonna do it. And we are still unbeatable. <laughs> Entering the 1986-87 season, the Rockets' expectations couldn't have been higher, especially those of Hakeem. Play against Boston was an experience for us that this was truly a championship team. When they beat us, they show the, the experience and the superiority that they were supposed to win. So saying to myself, well, okay, just like college, we go back next year. But Hakeem's high hopes were brought crashing down to earth as Houston lost three starters, including Ralph Sampson, to off-court problems and injuries, leaving Hakeem alone to shoulder the team's fortunes. Elijah Watt steals it. He'll win the race. He'll win the race. It's home for two. McRae gets a step. Hakeem was named first team all NBA and led the Rockets back into the postseason with their sights set on the finals. Hakeem Elijah won. That was a man who was bound and determined that he was going to make sure we went. Hey, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to see that we do not lose because I want to go back. And that's the only thing that would have made the season complete in 86 87. Facing the heavily favored Portland Trailblazers in the first round. Hakeem would again take it upon himself to carry his team. Oh, he's everywhere. An unbelievable performance. The Houston Rockets will move on to the semifinals of the Western Conference. In the next round, the Seattle Supersonics look to overwhelm Houston with their deep offensive arsenal. And at first, that's exactly what they did. Final second, Chambers gets the basket of the buzzer. And the Rockets are in trouble. 
Facing elimination in game six in Seattle, the Rockets turn to Hakeem for another heroic performance. And Elijah Wan not yet ready to go on vacation. Hakeem is doubled. And he scores and gets the foul. During a timeout, Dream will come and say, Bobby, I'm open, give me the ball. I say, well, Dream, you got four other guys hanging on you. That's okay, I dunk on all of them. Hakeem goes strong to the basket. We was triple a team every time. And uh, he was just unstoppable with that night. Hakeem Olajuwon has scored his team's last 12 points. He has been the king of this game. Playing his best game as a pro, Hakeem would valiantly battle the Supersonics through two overtimes. Tough shot. Hakeem has scored seven points in the second overtime and has 49 in the game. But even Hakeem's remarkable effort was not enough. As Seattle put a dramatic end to his hopes of returning to the finals. The Sonics win a classic in double overtime over the Houston Rockets. And worse, Hakeem's disappointment was only a prelude of what was to come. Just 19 games into the next season, the Twin Towers would be dismantled for good as Samson was traded. And Hakeem was left behind to face a constantly shifting cast of teammates and a string of bitter first round playoff disappointments. The Dallas Mavericks sweep the Rockets here at the summit. At the buzzer, it counts and Seattle wins and goes on to play in the second round. I can't believe it. After a while, just playing for the season, knowing that we can win a championship, but it'll be a long shot. He went through some tough times, the downfall of the Rockets after the 87 season, the team started to go south. Uh, he had to take the pressures of holding the franchise up almost by himself. I think the loss of his teammates and the loss of, of great expectations because of that, I think had, had a, an effect on him, but being the competitor he was, I think uh, his individual game, uh, he took it up to another level as many times as he could. But as Houston continued to lose, Hakeem's brilliant individual performances no longer brought only praise. His offensive game had come along so well that he could actually take on a double or triple team and have a better chance to score than passing the ball to an open man. So he got the label, and it was really a bum rap, that he was a selfish player, when in fact he was just showing the consummate competitor that he was. And the harder Hakeem tried to reverse the Rockets' fortunes, the worse his plight became. Nationally, he got this image of somebody who was never going to be able to be pleased by his teammates. In Houston, people who saw him play every night knew that this was a guy who was working his tail off and was doing everything he could to win. Hakeem's woes deepened as his nightly pounding led to a list of debilitating injuries, one of which, a pulled hamstring, would cause a confrontation with Houston owner Charlie Thomas. Akeem the Dream says he can't play. He says he's injured. He says his hamstring hasn't healed. The Rockets say that's bull. They say he won't play because he wants his contract renegotiated. So today, the Rockets suspended Akeem indefinitely without pay to openly question my integrity that I was faking injury that was very shameful to me as a player and as a person. As the 1991-92 season came to a close, it would see Hakeem miss the playoffs for the first time, and rumors of his departure spread through Houston. When I talked to Charlie as a gentleman that the best thing is like, let's dissolve this relationship in the best manner. You know, there's nothing personal, but I was ready to play elsewhere. I was ready to go. In the summer of 1992, Hakeem faced a crossroads. Each season, he had relentlessly improved his game. Yet for all his efforts, his team's fortunes had never been lower. A situation Hakeem found increasingly difficult to cope with. I think he had found himself as a basketball player at that particular juncture of his career. But off the court, he hadn't really found himself in terms of how was he going to be successful as a basketball player and as a person. Hakeem would search for solace by rededicating himself to his Islamic faith. It changed everything, the whole outlook, you know, it changed everything. 
now is a state of mind. You know, you have trust in God. And you know, whatever He wills will happen. You know, so you believe in just doing the best you can. And once you've done the best you can, then that's, you leave it up to God to, you know, to decide, you know. If it's up to him for me to win a championship, then it will happen. I think Hakeem really, he developed a calmness in himself. I mean, once he got deep into his religion, he just got focused, and I think that really calmed him down as, as a person and as a player. Hakeem's next step was to make amends with Rocket owner Charlie Thomas during a 14-hour flight to Japan. This was the first time Charlie and I got the opportunity to open the line of communication to settle our differences. That made it up for, for everything to say, well, let's look forward. Forget about what you hear or what happened. Okay, let's, let's move forward. Hakeem was not the only one who had changed. His supporting cast had slowly been improving. And as he led them into the 1992-93 season, his spirits were higher than they'd been in years. First of all, the individual talents, Kenny Smith, Maxwell, you know, we have Robert Ory, all this top. So now see myself now in the middle of the, all these talents. So give me a new energy. Working on coming. Quick spin. Almost land. Lock at 13. Pass inside there. Oh, blocked by Elijah Oh, boy. It's good to have him back. After years of carrying the Rockets, Hakeem now reveled in sharing the load. I mean, the team, there's so much help from everybody, and they make the, my job so much easier. And I just, everything just pick up, you know, picks up or automatically because the team are making it so much easier for me. Where goes baseline. Oh, pass. Dispelling any remaining notions that he was a selfish player, Hakeem helped the Rockets develop a new chemistry. Now Elijah being a point center. Yeah. <laughs> He was co very confident about his own ability and always has been, but he became much more confident about the people they put around him. Elijah Wan saves it. Smith for three. There's that ball movement by Elijah Wan that has become so potent for the Rockets this year. He became a better passer and he became a better student of the game. And by doing so, he made everybody around him, Otis Thorpe, Kenny Smith, Vernon Maxwell, uh, all of these players became better players because Akeem became a better player. Back outside, Maxwell passes up the three-pointer behind the back to Elijah Wan. Back to Max. Max passes off to Akeem. My goodness gracious. And entering the postseason, the Rockets didn't miss a beat. Dispatching the L.A. Clippers, they tasted their first playoff success since 1987. Good save, good catch by Akeem. Had to throw it over his back to Kenny Smith with a three. Right back to Akeem. Akeem is triple teamed. Robert Ory just beats the 24 second shot. Oh, baby! The Rockets are on their way. I think the intensity and the unity that we, the way we came out this series was very important. So I'm so proud of the guys, the way they played. And in the second round, they would extend the talent-laden Supersonics to seven games. Look at Hakeem Olajuwon. He gets the punch steal all the way. Hakeem with a steal and the fast break. Though the Rockets would ultimately lose in a hectic last-minute finish, this defeat was a far cry from the one they'd suffered six years before. This time, it would be a stepping stone toward good things to come. I can recall very vividly when they lost game seven in overtime. They came in the locker room and Akeem uh, sort of had his head down for a little while and he looked up and uh, he, he said, we go from here. As the Rockets entered the 1993-94 season, Houston's hopes were as high as they'd ever been. And Hakeem made sure that no one was disappointed. Now he goes inside. Look at the spin move. Oh, what a move by Elijah Wong. Wow, Hakeem! The Rockets win their 11th game in a row. Sensational game for that man. Hakeem Elijah Wong, 37 points. And the Houston Rockets going to a record of 15 and 0. Hakeem had the Rockets in high gear from the start. 
and leading by example. He dominated on both ends of the court. was just amazing. Just watching him was an awesome uh, experience for our team. Do they love it or what? I think he just had a quiet confidence about him. It sounds strange. He almost had a regal presence. And he never let the Rockets lose their intensity as he led them to 58 wins and captured the game's highest individual honor along the way. In the 93-94 season, he was the most dominant player that I have ever seen in the game of basketball. I'm here representing millions and millions of basketball fans around the world to tell you that you've had a spectacular NBA career. You've led your team to its best season ever. You're a certain Hall of Famer, and you do it with an elegance and a grace that's spectacular. Congratulations on being the 1994 NBA Most Valuable Player. And as the Rockets began their playoff odyssey, Hakeem was well aware of the stakes. Well, it was a lot of pressure. The second best record in the league. We know we cannot lose in the first round. So we were scared. But if the Rockets felt a twinge of nerves, Hakeem quickly calmed them. Goes left, runs right into Elijah Wong, blocks it. No matter what the Portland Trail Blazers tried, they were simply unable to stop Elijah Wong. Trying to turn baseline. He oh, threw that up. Oh, what a shot. In Portland, you know, they had Chris Dudley guarding him, and um, he just couldn't do anything with him. Elijah Wong falling. Oh, my goodness. What an awesome fall away jumper. Junior was scoring like. 37 and the bench was going crazy and Chris would look over at us with frustration on his face, you know, and we would tell him, don't worry about it, Chris, you know, it's not your fault. And the Houston Rockets advanced to round number two against... All right, now you've got to switch gears and Sunday the Phoenix Suns, is that correct? Yes. Can you talk to us about the Phoenix Suns? Well, we match up with them very well. I'm pretty much uh, confident with our team. We just have to refocus now, now playing on Sunday. The defending Western Conference champion Phoenix Suns presented the Rockets' first big test of the playoffs. The series began in Houston, and Hakeem was intent on ferociously defending the Rockets' home court advantage. Elijah Wan against Young Miller. Ori off the assist from Elijah Wan. But stunningly, the Rockets would squander an 18-point lead and suffer a heartbreaking Game 1 loss, and Game 2 would be no different as Houston again grabbed an early lead and inexplicably let it slip away. There's the trap on Elijah Wong. Oh he God. throws it away looking for Maxwell. And the sun suddenly has come to life. Absolutely. We were beating him by 20 points, by 18 points, and we got careless because we get so comfortable so quick, and we thought this would, this would be a, an easy game. Rockets just cannot buy a basket. Kind of like a plague, you know, it just starts to take over the entire team. Cassell, leaning inside, throws it up, missed it, and another rebound goes to Phoenix. Marley will pull up and shoot a three. Marley hands it, and it's a seven-point game. Unbelievable collapse here by Houston. Their confidence has just been shattered. Now K.J. breaks loose. Feeds it off to Barkley. Barkley, far corner for three. Shoots him! And Houston must feel like the roof is coming in. Well, the biggest collapse in NBA playoff history tonight. It was terrible. We had the lead. But going back to the locker room, still cannot understand or explain, explain or justify how we lost that game. We know for sure that this was the golden opportunity, and we, and we, and we were blowing it. But Hakeem's pain was just beginning as the press labeled the Rockets chokers and an embarrassment to their city. So we called the meeting and everybody opened up that now the city, all the reporters are against us, the whole world is against us. So now we only have ourselves in this room. 
then we have to be honest with ourselves. Akeem was just fantastic in getting to the crux of the uh, situation. And his statements were, are we gonna, you know, we ought to make the commitment now to do it, or be honest with ourselves and say, we don't want it. Game three in a best of seven series. The Suns up two games to none. The Brooms may be in evidence Sunday if they can win here today. You know, I remember looking in, in our guy's eyes and looking in his eyes, and no one was in a panic situation. And as usual, Hakeem made sure they felt at ease. Oh, look at the spin move by Elijah Hakeem at the dotted line, bumps AC off and turns around and drops it down. When, when in doubt, go to your MVP. And nice pass to Hakeem. Well, he feels it. He's come out on fire. I think he was very confident. You could see it in him. And when you, you know, your captains and your leaders have that kind of feeling, it just spreads throughout the team. And the Rockets dutifully followed their captain's lead. Penetration. Maxwell, how about five? Five threes in a row. Oh, I've never seen it. Oh, and the Rockets are rumbling again in Phoenix. Grabbing games three and four on the Suns' home court, the Rockets battled back into the series. Elijah Wan putting the cherry on the Sunday. I think the first two games we lost was a blessing in the sky because now we have something going. This chemistry that we have now, we will try our best to maintain it. If we maintain it, we go all the way. The teams would split the next two games, setting up a decisive seventh contest in Houston. This was a second chance, and you can see it in everybody's eyes that everybody's committed to, to do the job. So now I have to fulfill my part. Hakeem would do his part and more as he took over the game from the start. Oh, what a move. He wanted to take it right at Joe Prime. Fakes that baseline move, goes to the middle, leans in. Wow, how do you stop it? You just can't stop it. Uh, Paul Westphal is ready to throw his hands up. And there's nothing green or anybody else on the Suns can do. Delivering one of his finest clutch performances, Hakeem would make sure that the memories of Choke City would be all but a race. Goes to KJ and Elijah Wan drops it into the third goal. Oh, baby. Akeem Elijah Wan, 37 points, 17 rebounds, three blocked shots. Now to Jensen. What can you say about a king? I mean, what can you say? The guy, he does it all. You know, I, I just feel uh, privileged to, to coach somebody like that. I mean, that's just, uh, just amazing. The Western Conference Finals would almost be an afterthought. The Rockets were all business as they eliminated the Utah Jazz with merciless efficiency. Can you remember 1986, the last time this team was in the finals? You're the only guy in here that might remember it. Yeah. <laughs> What's going to be different now? I hope uh, the winning all these times, that would be a big difference. The finals, however, promised to be a grueling test as Hakeem and the Rockets faced the New York Knicks, who featured a familiar adversary. Ten years ago, Ewing had dealt Olajuwon a crushing defeat in the NCAA Finals. Now he again stood between Hakeem and his cherished goal. With Patrick, that would be a classic matchup. But I look at the opportunity for the, East, the city of Houston. In the history of the city, there's never been a team that won a championship, so there would be something so unique. And to be part of that team, it would be, it would be something so special. And in game one, Hakeem took history into his own hand. Beautiful move by Hakeem Olajuwon. Olajuwon has hit his first four shots. Olajuwon again going right at Ewing. Well, this is the problem that you run into when you try to cover this man on a one-on-one -on -one situation. As Hakeem Olajuwon having his way with the New York front line right now. Easily gets away from Ewing. Unstoppable. 
But while Houston celebrated Olajuwon's spectacular performance, the Knicks looked ahead to game two and plotted their revenge. Determined not to let Olajuwon take over the game, they swarmed him on every play. Olajuwon getting inside, and he is fouled. Pat Riley wants his team to get back to being the New York Knicks, which means tough, physical, aggressive. Hakeem Olajuwon facing double and triple teaming. Grinding Houston's attack to a halt, the Knicks dealt the Rockets a demoralizing home court loss. The dream has been devastated. The Knicks have smothered him inside. It's not been a factor. And back in New York, they look to break their spirit. Anthony Mason has been the dream's worst nightmare. Hakeem fought heroically, but the Knicks' relentless pressure took its toll as the Rockets lost two of the next three games. Uh, Elijah Wan is, is exhausted. Once again, Hakeem Elijah Wan not doing it in the fourth quarter. Elijah Wan stripped. is headed back to Houston with the Knicks up. Three games to two. We're down. One win. One win away. Tonight, game six, the 1994 NBA Finals. Rockets, the dream, all backs to the wall. It has come down to this for the Rockets. They must win at home tonight or spend the summer contemplating what might have been. Well, a lot of pressure. But the, the pressure was on both teams because they, you know, they didn't want to go to, to, to the final game. So that was the game that they, you know, if they were going to win the championship, that was the game. The Knicks counted on their suffocating defense to stop Hakeem one last time. But from the start, he responded with desperate determination. Not to Sam to sell. Sam back to Elijah Watts left up. For three quarters, Hakeem valiantly kept the Knicks at bay. But New York's inevitable run would finally come. John Starks with all eight Nick points to start the fourth quarter. Shaking off fatigue, Hakeem dug in to weather the Knicks barrage. I'm going to go to the now. Right down to Elijah Watts wheeling and dealing. The rookie again is a lot. The championship on the line, and these two teams going at it. No! 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 Pass to Mason. Tries to muscle in on the right side. Kicks it out back to start. Open for a three. Oh. And he scores! Yeah. John Starks unconscious here, keeping the Knicks alive. And with his season-long quest at stake, he would search for the strength to find one more heroic play. 86-84, Knicks down by two. All right, here we go. Five and a half seconds to go. Out of Stark. Stark against Maxwell. Ewing sets the pick. Stark with a look from three. Tip, and it's knocked away. And the Rockets win. The ball was tipped. Elijah Wan, Joe. Elijah Wan with the big tip. Stark comes off open, and Akeem sort of loses his balance, gathers himself. And I've seen him do it so many times before. I mean, there's just no... No way he's going to be denied. He's going to get the thing done. The MVP saves the Houston Rockets, and there will be a game seven. Back in, in training camp, we set a goal, and that goal was to win the championship. It's taken a hell of a lot of hard work, and it doesn't make sense to do all this work and come this far and not close it out. We came to the locker room, you see the out the locker room was set up, ready to celebrate. I look on the TV, they show the other locker room, also ready to celebrate. But in his heart, Hakeem knew that it was finally his time to celebrate. He realized how much we had overcome as a team and how much he had come on overcome individually that he wouldn't let this, this chance slip away. Shot clock at three. Here's Starks. Rejected by Elijah Wong. 
spinning. Baseline puts up. Oh, Elijah Wong. Unbelievable. And yes, the Rockets are fired up. Since his first days at the University of Houston, Hakeem had labored to bring his city a championship. And now, in front of his devoted fans, he would complete his decade-long quest. These are the moments, the championship moments that define the great players, the guys that are born to play basketball, the guys that are born to win. Seeing him progress from, from coming to this country, straight from Nigeria, uh, to the point where he is now, it's, it's great. Because I see a young man who worked his tail off and uh, deserves everything that he has received. Says, Get out of here with that stuff. You know, I just thought back to when he first got here, the years he had with us. Uh, I was just extremely proud for him and knew he deserved it. My golly, he deserved it. And the Houston Rockets, led by Akeem Olajuwon, are the world champions of 1994. I think what sums it all up is him sitting there as the buzzer goes off and just absor uh, absorbing all of this, uh, this wonderful feeling. I, I mean, just watching that gives me goosebumps. An NBA championship for Houston. They're Texas. following themselves. How sweet it is. It's an experience that you, can, you, know, you can never, you can't explain it. It was just something that's so overwhelming. You've been hearing about the championship so long. Now to actually realize it, that it's over. We've won it. It's unbelievable. Took him 10 years, but Akeem finally has won the big one. <laughs> It was a dream that probably could have had two NCAA championship rings, but it was so close it didn't make it. It was a dream that could have had the ring and, and all of us the trophy in 86. And we felt that pain in the locker room in Boston. And I watched him. And when they won, I was so happy for Akeem. But I'll be honest, I'm not, you know, I started crying. A taxi cab deposited him on the steps of Hoffine's Pavilion back in 1980, and he took it from there. And what a rise to greatness for Hakeem Olajuwon.